What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Today I've got a topic that I want to settle once and for all. On this channel, a very popular topic has been how to save money. Out of my 170 something videos, maybe 50 or 60 of them have been straight up about how to save money. That's a lot of videos. And there's still a lot of questions around how to save money. So in this video right here, I wanna to put together the most simple yet effective ways to save money. And I'm basing this off of one, prior experience, but two, stuff I'm still learning today because I feel like you can never stop learning. And with that said, without further ado, we're gonna jump straight into this video. First thing you gotta realize about saving money is that needs to be the first thing you do. And what I mean by that is, I mean as soon as you get paid, that's the first thing you should do is pay yourself. A few months ago, I made a video, and as I was recording the video, I thought of this idea that I thought was just so profound because I had never heard anybody say it before, but I just thought about it like as I was recording, and so I threw the concept in the video. And that concept was, don't think of saving money as just saving money. Because when you do that, you're, it's already in your mind, it's thinking of it as like a disciplinary type of thing. Like, oh, I gotta save this this month. That means I can't do what I wanna do this month because if I do, then I'm not gonna be able to save the money I wanna save. It just feels like a chore when you think that way. See, a better way to think of it is like a bill, but not just any bill, a bill to yourself. Because most of us, we have our bills on automatic, right? Or at least if you don't, it makes sense to put your bills on automatic. That way you don't have to think about it. Your money just goes straight to whichever bill that is. That way you don't miss any payments and have to pay any fees looking sick. And so it's the same exact thing with paying yourself. Instead of thinking of it like, okay, I gotta save money. Like, nah, I'm gonna set automations in my bank account, not just any automations. I'm gonna automate it to where as soon as I get paid, money goes into my savings account. And that's the first bill I pay, is the bill to myself. And you can start off a little small because you might not know what you can afford to pay yourself because you don't wanna pay yourself so much that you can't pay your bills, then you have to literally take money out of your savings account to pay your bills. You don't want that either. So even if you just start with a couple hundred dollars a month and then see how much wiggle room you have, okay, I'm gonna add another 100 or another 50 or whatever the case is, and you see what it looks like for you, then you can get comfortable and then you can start setting goals for how much you really wanna be able to save for yourself. That's what I've learned is helpful for me. And it's even better if you already have a budget set for yourself where you already have all your bills laid out so you already know how much everything costs. And if you don't, I recommend you doing that. And I also recommend you watch my How to Master Budgeting and Saving Money video. That teaches you the game on how to do all of that stuff. Especially if your saving is in your budget too, then you already know what number you should be hitting or what number you wanna be hitting every month in your savings. So you take that number, you automate it every month and you have it the first of the month sent over to your savings every single time. That's the first thing you do because the concept behind that is this. Usually what we do is at the beginning of every month or even just throughout the entire month in general, we pay our bills, you know, we buy miscellaneous things, we might go out to eat a few times, we might buy some clothes, you know what I'm saying? We might order some Uber Eats or something like that, or go to the movies. Basically what I'm saying is we spend money throughout the entire month pretty consistently, like pretty much on an everyday basis. So money's leaving your bank account anyway, so the thought is when it's all said and done, most of us just save what is left over. And that's not the optimal amount of money you could be having, whereas if you did it first, when you save the money, you could you could stack up a lot more, a lot faster just by doing that. Because now you're showing yourself what is important to you. You're saving, let's say $400 first, and then you're spending money on all your bills. And then you find out at the end of the month, you still have like, let's say $200, $300 left. Because now you're making it to where your money is tighter every month, so you have to make smarter decisions. So now here's the bills, boom, 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 boom. I can go out to eat a few times, maybe not several times, but a few times this month. And oh, I still got a few hundred dollars left. Let me throw that the rest of it into my savings. You get what I'm saying? But if you do it the first way where you're just spinning, 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 and then all of a sudden you look, oh, okay, I have about 150, $200 left at the month. That's all you save. Whereas in the previous example, you could save $600. And I've tried this myself. That's why I'm super confident that you could save a lot more, a lot faster. And it's just a smarter way to save because you're prioritizing saving over pretty much everything else. That's the biggest disconnect. Don't save what's left over, spend what's left over after you've saved. That is the key. That is how, if you take any advice from this video, take this first step right here. Save early. 
and then you'll find that it's less and less of a challenge for you. So you may or may not have noticed within the first piece of advice I just gave you, there's actually two pieces of advice in one. So the first thing is saving money is the first thing you do. That is your priority every single month. Because think about this, whenever you want to buy something, and especially if it goes on sale, you find a way to come up with the money to get it. So it should be the same exact type of priority when you're saving money for yourself. It should be the first thing you do every single month. Second thing is save money like you're spending it. Think of it as a bill. When you think of it as a bill, like money just works differently when you think of it as a bill. Like I think consciously we're better at spending money than saving money. I think anybody watching this video right now could agree with that. Like when I invest every month, I think of it as a bill. Like, okay, I'm at least spending a thousand dollars in the stock market this month, period. That's how it is every single month or maybe a 1750, but either way, I'm looking at it like it's a bill, a bill to myself, my future and my family's future. And money stacked up really quick on that because of it, because you know why? I made it a priority to put money in there. And having that same exact ideology with your own personal savings account, you'd be surprised. You can get the same types of results there. You could see twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars in less than two years in your savings account easily just by having that level of prioritization. And see, everyone thinks that when you're saving money, you have to cut back drastically and, you know, live off of rice and beans. Like, you don't got to do all of that. Matter of fact, next week, I'm going to make a video about my thought process behind frugal living so y'all can really understand, like, what it truly means to live frugally. It's not because, oh, I just want to be super cheap and live off of the bare minimum. Like, nah, that's, in my mind, that is a miserable way to live. Some people can do it. Some people have extreme amounts of discipline that I just don't have, but I still have a lot of discipline. And I'm telling you right now, you do not need to be extreme, like super extreme to save the amount of money that you want to save. You don't. You just really have to know what you want and you have to have a plan to get there. You don't have to scrape pennies to save the amount of money that you want. I'm telling you, you don't. Some of you might have to cut back more than others, but if you're cutting back a drastic amount, it's because you might not have made the proper decisions in the first place. You might have made the same mistake I made when I moved into my first place, choosing a place that was way more expensive than it should have been just because I had a good salary. You get what I'm saying? And because of that, it held me back from the amount of money I could have been saving. Or you might have gotten a car that you really wanted or something like that, that the car note is super expensive and it's setting you back $500 every single month. So yeah, some people are going to have to cut back more than others, but I'm telling you, you don't have to sell everything and live in an empty house and scrape pennies all day and, and eat once a day. You don't, you don't got to do all that. It's all about the strategy and how you go about doing this. You can save money while seeing a very minimal impact on your lifestyle. I'm telling you, you can. There's levels to this and there's steps to this, but I just want to leave you with that. That is definitely what you have to think about when you're thinking for the long term about saving your money. You'll definitely have to make some sacrifices here and there, but you're not going to have to go completely bare bones like, you know what I'm saying? No electricity, no shower, like you don't, you don't got to do all that. I think it's easy to take saving money to the extreme, but the thing is when you take certain things like that to the extreme, what happens is it's like with anything that you do cold turkey where you just cut it off. Like let's say if you're someone who likes to go out to a restaurant every single week, multiple times a week, if you just cut it off completely and you're cooking at home and you might not be that good of a cook, let me tell you something. In about three, four weeks, you'll turn right back around and do the same thing except tenfold. You'll be up in those restaurants. I know because I've done it. Trust me, I know. I've been a victim of that before. You know what I'm saying? I've definitely done that as well. But there's a balance. There's definitely a balance to everything. So, so first of all, you want to set your goals and see how long realistically you think it's going to take you. And then from there, you can decide what you want to do to get there. I can promise you, you're not going to have to go to the extreme to get there. And by the way, here's another pro tip. The best thing you can do to save money faster is not just saving money by itself because that's, that's doing it the slow way. Increasing your income along the way, even if that's working some overtime at the job. But there's tons of ways to make more income and I made several videos about it. I make videos about it every single week. So just check out my other videos and you will find other ways or at least ideas of how to make more income. If you can make an extra three, four hundred dollars a month, what would you do with that money? Think about that. That's how you save faster. So anyway, that's the second thing. I went on super long about that, but the second thing is definitely save money like you're spending it. We're real good at spending money. We're not so good at saving money. So just swap the mindsets and boom, you're good to go. 
Now, for the last thing I'll say is this. I notice that for most people, most people I've talked to, most people I've seen, most books I've read, most statistics that I've read say that food is the number one reason why people aren't able to save the amount of money that they should or want to save. And that's true. That was definitely the case for me. And I know that a lot of it goes towards not even just like traditional restaurants where you like sit down and everything, but I'm talking like fast food as well. Like we're on the move so much. The world is so busy. Everything is moving so fast. You don't always have time to come home and cook you something and then get ready for the next day. Like it's your world might be moving like super fast, right? Or you just might not feel like cooking. You might be tired. You know, you're working them, them hard hours them 12 hour shifts. 10 hour shifts, even eight hour shifts, they can take a toll on you. And so you might go eat fast food. So I'll say this, if you must go out to eat, whether it's fast food or whether it's like a more upscale place that's still considered fast food. Like uh, for example, I have this place I like to go to. It's called the Habit Burger Grill. It is a dope place super retro right it's not the fastest food in the world you still gotta wait a little bit because it takes them forever to cook the food but it's good quality food but what i'm saying is if you go to any of these places uh chick-fil-a mcdonald's the habit burger grill burger king arby's it doesn't really matter matter of fact i don't care where you go applebee's the cheesecake factory wherever you decided to go you have one or two options one don't get a drink I'm dead serious. That will chop off some serious money. Because, like, if you notice, when you go to McDonald's or to Chick-fil-A and you ask for a meal, you might want, like, a number one or a number two meal. They'll say, okay, what to drink? They say it almost as if you don't have a choice. But you can say, nah, I'm going to get that without the drink. They'll say, okay, cool. But if you get it with the drink, that's going to add three, four, five dollars to I'm dead serious. It'll add some serious money. Especially if you get a large. Don't get a large. It's going to add some extra money onto your meal. And that happens to be one of the most expensive things to get on the meal is the drink. Sometimes the drink ends up being almost as much as the food. So if you if so if you already have drinks at home that you want to drink, like whether it's Coke, Pepsi, uh, sweet tea, I don't care what it is. You have it at home, just drink it when you get home. Or here's a second option. Just ask for water. Nowhere is going to charge you for water. Unless you go to McDonald's, they might charge you like 50 cents if you get a large water. But if you get like a medium water anywhere, they ain't going to charge you nothing. And you get free refills. Pro tip. So I'm just saying, if you if you must do those things, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to. That's, that's why I was saying. You don't have to make huge sacrifices. You can still eat the good food, but maybe you might sacrifice the drink. Maybe instead of having a soda or a tea or a beer, maybe instead you'll have a glass of water and be happy with that. And drink that beer or that soda or that tea when you get home. That's something we can think about. Because it don't make no sense. You could go out to Target, Walmart, all of the, I don't care where you go. You could go to any of those places, get a two liter of anything you want for cheaper than like a simple glass of Coca-Cola at Applebee's or something like that. I think it is absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, I'm exaggerating a little bit. I'm just saying two liter bottles of soda should not rival a single glass of soda at a restaurant. And I know a lot of restaurants get free refills of that same soda, but the bottom line is, how often do you get refills? Maybe twice? So you're telling me two cups of Coca-Cola is worth an entire two liter bottle of Coca-Cola? That ain't how it works in my world, I'm sorry. Y'all got me out here going on a tangent, getting all excited about this stuff. I'm trying to calm down, but I'll, I'll just say this. If you get like a 12 pack of whatever, it doesn't matter if it's alcohol, soda, whatever, it's gonna be a lot cheaper if you get that 12 pack and if you go to like a bar or it's like a restaurant and get cups of the stuff. So like it's the sooner you realize the little ways in everyday life you can save money, that's how you make big wins that compound over time. But I want you to think about those three things. They're very, very simple, but I think they're the most effective way to save money, especially in today's time, 100%. But anyways, I just wanted to make this quick video to really settle the score on how to save money correctly. Like it, it's really not difficult to do and it requires some discipline, but as you can see, like it doesn't take a ton of discipline. Let your bank account do the discipline for you. Set it up one time, forget about it. And the only time I want you to remember it is if you wanna add some more money to it and that's it. Just keep, keep it going, keep it going. And you'll be surprised at the end of the year or at least 12 months after you start saving, you'll be surprised, like I saved a lot more than I thought I was going to. Exactly. 
That's what we want. That's what we want. But anyways, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.